So um, this, I will not give you a presentation of Daria, but Daria was the initiator of the initiative I'm going to present to you, which is actually a joint effort and a work in progress. So I'm not presenting something that is completely finished already. Um, I want to give you a sense of um, our ongoing discussions without betraying the dynamical process that is going on right now in these discussions. So let me just say as an introduction, there will be a feedback phase um, where the concerned communities will be asked for concrete feedback on some aspects that I will maybe um, evoke today. And you as members of the involved communities will be solicited, that will be probably in the late summer or the autumn. And maybe you will find then some elements that have evolved compared to what I'm going to present today. But my presentation really intends to give you an idea of where we stand today on the concept of the Cultural Heritage Data Reuse Charter. Um, my presentation uh, will have basically two parts. One where I will present to you the idea of the Cultural Heritage Data Reuse Charter why is it called a charter and what do we uh, understand by that? And then a second part in which I will see to what extent it maps the fair principles, applies them, if it maybe goes further or um, in other aspects, what could be still points of discussions. So let me start with the general idea of this data reuse charter and with a question basically who would be interested in such a framework for cultural heritage data reuse? So the first a group of people who is likely to be interested in such a framework is, um, are the researchers. <coughs> For the researchers, finding out about the rights and reuse possibility when they're working with cultural heritage data takes a lot of time and energy. They often don't know who is the contact person. The rights can vary from one collection to another within the same institution. This is something that researchers have to um, um, spend a lot of um, energy in. For example, at the Max Planck Institute for the History of Science in Berlin, one person was hired for clearing rights for the institute's researchers. That's that person's job. So this means that this is not a marginal aspect for researchers who work with cultural heritage data. That's something that impacts greatly their work conditions. The second actors who are likely to be interested in such a framework are the cultural heritage institutions. Small cultural heritage institutions often d don't have enough dotation to prioritize information on reuse. They often work on a case-by-case -case basis when someone asks about one specific collection or one specific data set, which in the end is probably not as energy saving as it might seem. Larger cultural heritage institutions, on the, on the other hand, make reuse information available online, maybe, but maybe not always for a single data set or a single collection. But generally, this framework is given. Still, oftentimes, it's complicated to communicate with researchers and get them to use the data that is at their disposal or make the legal aspects transparent and easy to understand for scholars and other users. So larger cultural heritage institutions would like to know more about the research that is being done with their material in order to increase both the visibility of the scholarly work and the visibility of, the, of their collections. And the third group of um, people or actors that might be interested in such a framework are data centers or presenters of data at large, that is the institutions that host data sets and make them available. This category at large includes universities, data hosting bodies where researchers or small cultural heritage institutions store their data or make them available, cultural heritage labs who conduct experiments and store their results, for instance, archaeological scanning of artifacts, and they are essential partners in the communication between researchers and cultural heritage institutions at data level and at collection level. So all of these actors are basically interested in a better communication with the other partners within the ecosystem and in a better visibility of the data. And that's what we're trying to address with the Charter. So when we um, started thinking about the, this, we noticed we were somehow lacking a general framework that would have, um, that would encompass basically clear reuse principles 
um, that is common reuse and authority concepts to all the actors involved, the scholarly communities, the cultural heritage institutions and the data centers. A framework that would improve communication between all of these actors in this ecosystem that would automatize metadata exchange while maintaining a manual approach in parallel depending on how on, on what level people want to be working either at the, for a small data set or for a larger collection we need something that allows a discussion on standards formats best practices in order for all the actors to converge and increase their reuse potential and also we need to acknowledge the need for visibility of the work of all the actors involved that is, um, actually, the different actors need to better know what the others are doing. The researchers often don't really realize the work the cultural heritage institutions are doing. So do we need a framework? Do we need guidelines? Do we need a contract? That was also part of our discussions. And I think in um, the two talks before this idea of framework emerged already, um, and we came at map with the idea of the charter for the following reasons. This is not about a legally binding framework. This is about finding a way to realize a moral contract between the actors working with cultural heritage data. This is not about prescriptive, prescriptive obligations. This is about putting together a set of best practices on all levels. And there is no need to reinvent the wheel, but basically to rely on existing ideas and tools, like the FAIR principles, for instance. But it's still something that needs a firm direction, that is a general philosophy that is based on common principles, and that enunciates these principles clearly, and hence we got to the concept of charter. For the while, this concept of charter has been a hindrance to explain the purpose of this initiative, since um, the implementation that we envisioned at first didn't map the concept of charter, and now um, we have decided to really align with the concept of charter uh, in order to make it possible to approach the development on a more solid basis. So um, I will present to you now the general purpose, the general frame framework, and the principles this is based on, because the general idea now is to really base um, this charter on um, some core principles. So with the purpose of fluidifying transactions between actors working within with cultural heritage data um, and the purpose of fostering cultural heritage data reuse in the end and by that to uh, actively implement open science this at first DARIA initiative is now a joint initiative with Europeana, Clarin, EPEF, IRIS, Partners, and Iperin CH. And I think it's clear that considering the whites of this initiative, it is something that can only be carried out with all of these uh, partners who are now uh, together in a steering group working on the next steps. So, concern, the idea is in the end to have this to present this charter maybe as a web environment. So um, the technical and requirements for this web environment are currently um, under review by the steering group, which is composed of, of like I said, um, uh, representatives of Europeana, Clarin, APEF, ERIS, Patnas, Iperin and Daria. Um, the envisioned options are the following. You should come online uh, um, and be able to abide to the charter principles, so to sign the charter, the principles, I'll get to, to them uh, in a minute. Um, you should be able to retrieve information on licensing, on citation, on the reuse of specific data sets or of complete collections. You should be able to easily contact the people concerned with various issues, issues in connection with specific data sets and to transfer information on data sets either manually or automatically. So the metadata data exchange um, should be um, accessible via APIs or by hand. I think it's important because you can't really, um, it's very difficult to have some, for instance, working at the level of Europeana, which is a very uh, broad level, and then a single researcher trying to um, initiate a cooperation with the smaller cultural heritage institutions that these two level we're basically trying to accommodate. And we're basing this work on um, 
six principles that actually integrate the FAIR principles. So this is currently the core principles we are working with. Reciprocity, interoperability, citability, openness, stewardship and trustworthiness. So this part is currently under development. I cannot um, tell you if it's going to stay completely like this um, uh, within the coming weeks, but this is what we're working on currently. So um, basically the six, six principles uh, map the uh, FAIR principles. You will find the findable in the citability and the openness, the accessible in the stewardship, interoperable is interoperable and the reusable is actually contained in openness to achieve and trustworthiness which is pretty much uh, this aspect of the provenance you mentioned before. Um, while discussing to what extent um, this uh, is really a replica of the FAIR principles we came to the conclusion that actually the charter goes one step further because it does not the, take in consideration only the data characteristics, but also the relationships between the actors exchanging this data. So um, in that sense, the charter is more practical um, since it is more addressable by the actors in terms of, for instance, citability and trustworthiness. I um, try to uh, map a little bit the differences with the partners guidelines. It's interesting because in the, the partners guidelines um, insist on the importance of metadata richness and complexity in order to achieve the implementation of the FAIR principles um, on page 88 for instance. And the charter goes in a complementary direction because we are, on the, we are looking for the maximal simplicity uh, in the way um, this, this um, um, the FAIR, FAIR principles are um, to be implemented. So the idea is to reach a very simple licensing framework um, and these reuse conditions must be expressed in a way that is simple to understand for man and machine and um, you should not underestimate what it means for a researcher to, un to understand reuse uh, conditions for instance. It's probably easier to implement for a machine than for <laughs> the scholars in the end. Um, the uh, charter also goes in the direction of um, not giving format prescriptions but a strong invitation to work with standards common to all actors of the ecosystem. So this has a somewhat pedagogical dimension, bringing the actors to work <coughs> with data and metadata exchange protocol standards, which is for researchers really a way of uh, changing the way they've been working until now for most of them. So the charter, in short, um, it should offer a practical operationalization of the FAIR principles for the cultural heritage research. And by that I mean the scholars and the cultural heritage institutions and the data centers involved in this uh, research as a whole. Um, and integrating not only the data but also the actors. Um, it is developed as a complement to other existing initiatives with similar goals, the Partners Guidelines, the European Data Model, the Right Statements. It's really an initiative that is carried by extremely strong synergies and um, that is benefiting also a lot from the work that has been done, done in the context of Hyperion and Iris in terms of building the community of cultural heritage research at the interface of research and CHI. And I think that's something that really has emerged over the last years, the idea that there is a community of cultural heritage research. Um, this initiative is integrated in a long-term vision of open science and an open access based high quality research on high quality data, which is, I think, uh, something that both Daria and Clarine are working towards. And it has the potential to improve cultural heritage institution and scholars work on cultural heritage data dramatically um, for the years to come. The main condition for this to work is really to coordinate efforts. That means to communicate around what we're developing right now and um, for that reason, I thank you in advance for your feedback.